All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Uh, it's lunchtime, about to go on my run. It's cold out. Uh, my phone, let's, let's see what the temperature is. Oh, it's warmed up. It's only 33 degrees right now. Earlier, it was 19, so <laughs> I guess that's good. Uh, today's Wednesday, December 2nd. I'm like really looking forward to getting this season started. But as I mentioned in my last couple videos right now, just kind of still doing whatever I want. Don't really have like a plan every day. So just going out and running and just having fun. And it's really sunny out. So I'm wondering if it looks like maybe there's not much wind either. So it's probably gonna be a very different run than yesterday. Welcome to the Midwest. Also very excited, Amazon. Uh, I got a Black Friday deal on a mechanical keyboard. This is actually the keyboard that uh, MKBHD recommends. Uh, I got two different kinds because I don't know anything about mechanical keyboards. I got the red switches and the brown switches to see which one I like the best. But this is on a great Black Friday sale. And uh, really excited. I'm going to open it up as soon as I get back from my run. So stick around for that if you're into mechanical keyboards. <laughs> I was going to try and film my whole like pre-run process. Uh, what I do to get ready and stuff. Uh, because some people have been asking about that. But I have... I like work has just been really crazy recently last couple last couple weeks honestly uh, and today was no different gonna make that happen soon but yeah I gotta get going I gotta get running so let's go guys welcome back good run today th about three miles just under eight minute pace so feeling like I'm feeling like I'm able to run pretty smoothly right now uh, which is really good I still have a little bit of pain in my ankle and right before the run it kind of flared up just a little bit like while I was doing my warm-ups uh, so I'm not exactly sure <laughs> I know I keep telling you guys about this but I don't know exactly what's going on with it and I was kind of hoping that with training it would just like slowly go away on its own and it just doesn't really seem like it is so if it keeps getting worse like I'll have to go to like physical therapy probably and I don't know, but state of Indiana, it sucks because you have to have a doctor's note uh, to go get physical therapy. You can't just walk into a clinic. I'm just kind of like wondering what's going to happen as I start to ramp up my training. Uh, right now, we're 23 and a half weeks away from the Cruel Jewel, and I would really love to start training hard this weekend. Uh, and like physically, everything else, I'm in a good spot. Mentally, I'm in a good spot, ready to train. Uh, it's just this little thing with my ankle. I don't know exactly what's going on. But I did promise you guys that I would open up this mechanical keyboard. Uh, this is the Keychron K2. Really excited about this. I've been wanting a mechanical keyboard for a long time because I do a lot of typing, especially uh, with work and everything, but with like video editing. I've got uh, the MacBook Pro from like a year and a half ago. And so it has the butterfly keyboard still. So I got one. It was on a Black Friday sale. Like I said, I got the red and the brown switch. This is the brown switch. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is. And so that's why I got two different kinds. Uh, so we're going to check it out. There we go. Let's move all that out of the way. Let's see what this feels like and sounds like. Ooh, ooh, it's really nice. So we're gonna put that up there, and now I'm gonna check out the other one. This is the red switch. Same sort of thing. The keys themselves actually are lighter on the red switch style than the brown switch. But let's see. Okay, I think I like the brown version better. The red just feels like, they feel like they kind of like stick a little bit. I actually don't mind the butterfly keyboard that much on the MacBook Pro, but it is just like after you've been typing on it for a long time, it's just, it's kind of a pain. So I'm gonna keep trying these out and I will let you guys know which one I decide to keep. 
So this is actually the third time I've recorded this whole segment. Let's just check. Yep. First time I recorded the whole thing and it was just way too long. I edited it down and it was like a 20 minute section on these two types of training, which would have been super boring for everybody. Second time I filmed this, the microphone wasn't on. Now we're doing this whole thing a third time, so I should be pretty good at talking at this point. But what I wanna talk about now is these two types of training. And they're both pretty simple to understand in concept, uh, but put into application. One is really easy, one is a lot more difficult. So these two types of training are the MAF method and the periodized method. The MAF method, M-A-F, stands for Maximum Aerobic Functioning method. And it was actually developed by a guy named Phil Maftone and conveniently it's the first three letters of his last name as well. The whole point of the math method is to run efficiently, injury-free for life. I'm going to keep this incredibly short. There's more to it. You can check out the website that I've linked down below, but it pretty much is just running by heart rate and it's 180 minus your age. So say you're 30 years old, that equals 150. That is your target MAF heart rate. And you just run all of your runs at that target heart rate. So you need a pretty good heart rate monitor for this to actually work. I wouldn't trust the wrist heart rate monitors that are in a lot of watches because taking an optical heart rate at your wrist is not always super accurate for everyone. So I'd recommend a chest strap. Polar makes a good one, the H10. They also make an optical heart rate strap that goes around somewhere on your arm. That's a lot more accurate as well, but pretty much any chest strap will do. And so that's literally it. Like you just go out, you warm up, and then you get to that target MAF heart rate and you stay there for all your runs. It's super, super simple. And so for somebody that needs simplicity, for someone that's also like a chronic overtrainer, someone that maybe if you get injured a lot, this is a really great method for you. And it's proven to make you faster and more efficient. And the way that works is you go out and you, you're gonna do tests every four to six weeks. So you go out and you just run a 30 minute interval at MAF heart rate and you record how far you ran. So however many miles or kilometers it was, you record that. Then four to six weeks later, you do it again. And hopefully if you've been training right, you're going to actually be able to run farther during that 30 minutes at the same heart rate, meaning you're running a lot more efficiently because you're running farther and faster at the same energy output theoretically. So that's pretty awesome. And the second way of training that I want to talk about today is periodized training. So that means training by periods. It literally just means breaking up your season into chunks. And I would recommend this way of training for someone that likes getting into their workouts, really planning everything out, being really detailed, and someone that likes to have a lot of variation in their runs. The math method, every run's pretty much the same, uh, but it's super simple. And that's the point. This way, you're gonna have a lot of different kinds of runs and your season is gonna look different as it progresses. I would also only recommend this way of training for someone that doesn't get injured very often. If you find yourself chronically injured, I would push you more towards the math method. But just to give a brief overview of the periodized method, this is something that I'm actually doing for my season coming up. So the first period that's gonna start in December is seven weeks long, and it's even further broken up into three weeks, one week, three weeks. Uh, but this is focusing on the VO2 max side of my energy system. It's like that really high end, like super fast, like really short, three minute intervals of just all out high intensity effort. Those are gonna be my key workouts during that first block. I'm still gonna be doing slower runs, zone two, and I'm still gonna be doing my long runs as well. But the key workouts, the ones that really, really matter are the high intensity workouts. The second block is gonna be focusing on lactate thresholds. So that's eight to 10 minute intervals, of pretty high intensity, but it's like that zone four, high zone three sort of thing, and then Still going to be doing slower runs during the week, still going to be doing long runs, but the key workouts are those lactate threshold workouts. And then the third period is going to be focused all on the long run. So I'm going to be, my key workouts are going to be those weekend workouts where it's like 20 miles, probably do back to back 20 milers, 25 milers. There's going to be a lot of climbing involved, but it's going to be focusing more on that lower zone two, that kind of go all day energy system. And then the last two weeks is going to be a taper. So we've got seven weeks, seven weeks, seven Seven weeks, two weeks, and that just works really well for me. Very different workouts in each block, and that's something that is I'm really drawn to because I like really planning out all of my workouts for the week. I like having a lot of variation, and there's a lot of other ways to train as well, but I know that a lot of us are kind of right in that 
time period where we're trying to plan out our next season. We're hoping that those spring and summer races are gonna actually happen. And if we wanna actually do well during those races, we have to start training, you know, December and January. So we're right there at the beginning of this training season. And it's best to have a plan right from the beginning. You know, there's a saying, failure to plan is a plan to fail. <laughs> but I just went over two options. There's a lot more out there and I really only skimmed the surface of both of these. So if you want more information, let me know in the comments down below. I can talk more about it on my live streams. That's actually probably the best place to do this because I can speak at length and I can uh, answer a lot of questions live in the moment. So join us Tuesdays at 9 p.m. But that's gonna be it for me today. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope the third time I recorded this actually works. <laughs> and yeah, I will see you guys again soon. Bye.